Okay, we're still giving some kind of preliminary uh, um, definitions before we move on to a full development of a, of a nonlinear finite element model. Uh, and so in this lecture, I want to talk a little bit about the differences between Lagrangian and Eulerian uh, meshes, because that's a, a critical feature in how we formulate uh, the problem. So let me begin and just say that there's actually three features that govern uh, different descriptions of uh, discretization. Okay, so three features uh, uh, govern different descriptions of discretization. Uh, in the governing equations uh, of mechanics. Okay, those three features are number one, the mesh description, which we'll talk about today. Number two, the kinetic description. Okay, and what the kinetic description is, is the choice of the stress tensor that we're going to use. Right? Um, so something like uh, whether we use the Cauchy stress tensor or the um, Piola Kirchhoff stress tensor, that's going to determine the form of the momentum equation. And then finally, the kinematic description. Okay, that's going to mean our, our choice of strain measure. You know, and thus far in in, in uh, most of your classes, we've just chosen a small a small strain uh, strain measure, and we're going to talk about some other types of strain measures here and and how those uh, can be used. Okay, so we, we, uh, before we launch into meshes proper, I want to say that we typically, um, uh, we, we typically describe material phenomena, uh, with two, um, coordinate definitions or two types of coordinate definitions. Okay. The first coordinate definition is what we'll call spatial coordinates. And we're going to denote those with a C, right? The Greek letter C. Um, and these will sometimes also be called Eulerian coordinates. And as the, as the name sounds, spatial coordinates uh, specify a location in space. Okay, the second type of coordinates we're going to deal with are what are called material coordinates. Okay, and we'll denote those with a capital X. They're also called Lagrangian coordinates. And what these do is they specify a material point. So it basically acts as a label for the material. So, i.e. a label. Okay. Um, typically, though, uh, x, the material point coordinate, is taken to be whatever the spatial coordinate is in the initial configuration before any deformation has happened. Okay, so uh, usually um, x, the material point, uh, is taken to be the spatial coordinate uh, in the initial configuration, or the undeformed configuration. Okay, so if you like, we can write sort of, uh, say, at, at time t equals zero, so before anything has happened, the material coordinate labels x are equal to their initial spatial locations, evaluated at time t equals zero. Okay? Something else to point out is that the spatial coordinates uh, vary in time, but the material point doesn't change in time, right? Its label doesn't change in time. It moves around in space, but its label remains the same. So x does not change with time, okay? Uh, even though the material point moves, even though x might move, right? Remember, it's simply a label. Okay, so based on, on the, these definitions, uh, we can define two types of meshes. So based on these definitions, uh, we can define uh, two types of meshes. Okay, so let me draw a sort of our diagram for how I want to uh, describe these. So this will be our time axis. And since this is a lecture on 1D, I'm just going to show you this in 1D. So this, this, this point here will be our spatial position, C, right? So, and then I'm going to have a mesh, which means that I'm going to have nodes. So I'm going to denote the nodes with, let's say, circles here. Okay. Let's say that. 
So here's your legend if you want, these circles. Those are the nodes of our mesh. And since this is a 1D, right, so there's one element, two element, three element here, right? And and then let me also describe the uh, color of the material co uh, coordinates. Okay, so I'll go ahead and so the green dots correspond to the locations of the material points or the material uh, at at this at those nodes at time t equals zero. And then let's go at so let me let me uh, give you the label up here. Okay, those are going to be the material points. And let's go ahead and draw a, some sort of a deformation. Okay, so let's say that our deformation of this point in time goes there. Let's let's go ahead and put it up here. So this is the new point in time, right? And this one here maybe goes to here, right? Maybe this one goes to here. This is the just again the deformation. Uh, it's in time of these points, so something like that. So these points all come together somehow uh, as as this mesh, as the uh, deformation moves through time. Those are the locations of the material coordinates. Okay, so and I'm, so this, these dots are the initial, right, and then these X's are the material coordinates or the material points in the final state. All right. So what if we have we allow the nodes and the material points to deform at the same time. So I'm going to put a dash line here to indicate the location of these nodes if they moved with the points. Okay. So this, maybe this is our initial node. And then this dash line, that's our final node location. Okay, but it's final only in the in the in which case this is if we define what's called a Lagrangian mesh. So this is the final in a Lagrangian mesh, right? The Lagrangian mesh is defined as um, a mesh that is attached to the material points. So the mesh itself moves as the material deforms. That's what I've just drawn for you here. This is the most common uh, mesh that we'll see in solid mechanics. Okay. How about for an Eulerian mesh? Okay, so for an Eulerian mesh, nothing changes. The, the nodes remain in the same location. So in an Eulerian mesh, there will be our final node cases precisely at the point that they started at and, and completely untethered to the, to the uh, deformation of the material. Okay? This has both, both advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so Let's say that these red circles, this will be the uh, the nodes. This will be the final position uh, in an Eulerian mesh. Okay, so I hope that that's clear. A Lagrangian mesh, the nodes are attached to the element points. Or in a Lagrangian mesh, the nodes are attached to material points, so the mesh deforms with the material. In an Eulerian mesh. The Eulerian mesh is fixed in space, and it does not deform with the material. Rather, the material sort of moves through the mesh, okay? That's the distinction. Okay, this image I just put up here for you uh, is a 2D version. Now I'm explicitly showing you uh, the deformed and the undeformed state, but I'm not modeling it in time, really. I'm just showing you, though, that in the Lagrangian case, you can see that the nodes track with the material points, whereas in the Eulerian case, the nodes remain fixed and the mesh never deforms. The material simply deforms through it, okay? Let me give you some remarks on these uh, types of meshes and why why some there are advantages and disadvantages to each, okay? Okay, so let me give you some remarks. Number one, okay, how about for Lagrangian meshes? I'm going to abbreviate those LM so I don't have to keep writing that out. Okay. So for Lagrangian meshes, uh, element quadrature or integration points, uh, they are remaining constant with respect to the material points. Okay. Because they're tied right to the nodes themselves. So element quadrature or integration points uh, remain coincident 
uh, with uh, uh, the material points that they were on originally. Okay? What does that mean? Is that no material passes between elements. So whatever material began in an element, that's the, that's the amount of material that's still in the element. Okay? So no material passes between elements. How about for Eulerian message? Uh, for Eulerian meshes, I'm going to abbreviate that for at least for this lecture, EM, so I don't have to keep rewriting that. The material point uh, at the quadrature point varies with varies in time. Okay, so there's an implication here. Um, so look up here, right? And if I look at my Eulerian mesh that I'm showing you up here, in fact, the deformation could be such that if this, if my integration point was here, not only has the inter material point changes, there's no more material there, right? And that could happen uh, during the deformation process. So it actually, it makes it difficult for to use Eulerian meshes for anything that um, that is tied to the material history. So if you want to th talk about things like plastic deformation or viscoelastic behavior, anything that that the prior state of the material is going to drive future behavior, Eulerian meshes are challenging to use for, okay? So it makes it difficult uh, for uh, Eulerian meshes to model um, history-dependent materials, okay, like solids. So if you're Constantly wondering why in the world the fluids folks frequently use this Eulerian mesh and solids guys use Lagrangian. It's because fluids don't really have much of a memory uh, unless you get into sort of a very specialized fluids. And so it doesn't really matter if the integration point changes, if, sorry, if the material point is, is, um, not, uh, not tracking with the, the integration point. But in the contrast, uh, in contrast with solids, where let's say you do care about, uh, how, uh, how previous um, loads have affected the material, you need to be able to track that with, with good accuracy. Okay, so that's one set of remarks. How about another one? So in Lagrange meshes, or Lagrangian meshes, right, and this, this is kind of a similar uh, statement, the nodes and the material points are coincident. So the first was the, the element quadrature points were consistent, which affected, um, the, right, we we're measuring material. We know that um, the material is not defined at the nodes, right? But the nodes are typically going to be on surfaces or interfaces. So uh, the material points are going to be coincident um, with the nodes. So let's write that first. So material points are coincident with nodes. All right, so what does that mean? That means that uh, boundary nodes still remain, remain on the boundary throughout the deformation. Okay, this makes it uh, easier uh, to impose boundary conditions. Okay, you can see if I had some sort of a boundary condition on this edge of the Eulerian mesh uh, and, and the deformation took place such that the material moved away, I'd actually have to move the boundary condition off the nodes. So that's what I'm going to say in the second sort of half. In Eulerian meshes, um, the boundary conditions must be imposed at locations, not specifically at the nodes. Okay, and this is an additional complication. Okay, kind of a part three, but follows on, on two for the same reasons as two. Um, so let me just say, for the same reasons as two, uh, Lagrangian meshes uh, can model material interfaces much better. Right, so for example, how about if you're doing composite modeling and you want to uh, uh, see sort of a, uh, a fiber matrix interface be modeled, right? Okay, number four. Now this is a disadvantage. Um, so in in Lagrangian meshes, right? Uh, what do we know? We know that the the nodes follow the material points. So that means that the elements are going to be distorting as the material deforms. Okay, so the elements distort as the material deforms. And sometimes when that happens, it does so severely. So sometimes this is severe. Okay? Well, we know that uh, element accuracy is going to degrade with increasing element distortion. So element accuracy decreases 
with increasing element distortion. And depending on the form, you could end up having, let's say, a Jacobian that becomes zero or negative. That happens uh, and it kind of blows up your model. So what is the, the, the implication of all of this? Is that there's actually a limit to the amount of deformation that you can uh, model with a Lagrangian approach. So the amount of deformation uh, that can be accommodated with a Lagrangian mesh uh, is limited. Okay. In contrast, right in Eulerian meshes, the elements don't distort, as we showed. So what that means is that our accuracy isn't degraded with material deformation. Okay, and so therefore deformation isn't limited. Um, it has other problems, right? We talked about all of those in the first three, but this is where an advantage that an Eulerian mesh gives you. It's one of the, the things that you, that you probably will come up against if you do much FEA work where you're looking at severe plastic deformation, maybe crash simulation, is that your model, no matter how good your material model is, your model will just frankly crash because your elements distort too much. And so then you're going to want to be like, well, how, what are my choices? What can I do to accommodate this kind of distortion um, or to accommodate this kind of deformation? Um, and so I'll just in passing note that there's a fifth option, okay? And just so it's something you can look up. I'm not going to talk about it in this class, but I'll just say a third type of mesh exists. Okay, it's referred to as the arbitrary Lagrangian Eulerian mesh. Sometimes you'll hear it called the ALE if you look it up in like your um, like an abacus help, uh, an ALE mesh. Okay. And I'll, and I'll just say, it just tries to take exploit the advantages of both mesh types. Okay? Again, so if you get stuck and you're, and you're trying to find some solutions, just remember this is an option. It's not without its, its own troubles, but uh, it's out there in, in, in an advanced FEA class. It's worth at least being aware that it exists. Um, in this class, we're going to primarily focus on Lagrangian uh, meshes. We're going to assume that the deformation is small enough to not blow the model up with element distortion. Um, and so uh, just to sort of to limit our scope, that's what we're focusing on. But I want you to be aware that both types of meshes exist and um, uh, the formulation for each is going to be different uh, depending, on, uh, uh, depending on how you define those nodes. Okay, so with that, the, the next thing I want to talk about in the, in the next lecture is going to be um, the... Uh, the difference between a Eulerian and a Lagrangian material description, and uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll try to distinguish how that differs from an Eulerian and Lagrangian mesh.